If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Oh, 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 oh I love to swim in Doring. When you want to swim, you want See, to See, I'm gonna get stuck on. now with that song. Now it's in my head. Sorry. 46 seconds of two damn logos. Don't you get tired of this? Literally counting the seconds of animated logos and repeating yourself in every single goddamn video. How has it not occurred to you that this is a staple of the medium? You're sending something basically 99% of movies do, meaning it's not something wrong, but how it's done. I mean, you yourself currently have videos with intros that are nearly a minute these days, which means you're being hypocritical here. So, Coral, when you said you wanted an ocean view, you didn't think you were going to get the whole ocean, did you? Fish real estate. Sending the Kardashian home. Smelly, but remember, fish are friends, not food. Because a lot of other clownfish had their eyes on this place. Every single one of them. That's interesting, since while this movie gets a ton of actual real clownfish facts correct, real ones live in communities where only the alpha male and female are permitted to breed, making me wonder why there are so many damn clownfish clans in this tight vicinity to be competing for Marlin's and Emony. Okay, but clearly Disney is taking a bit of artistic license with these animals to tell a story, right? Surely you're not suggesting everything in this movie has to be realistic. I mean, you know, because they're talking and have human teeth? And the fact they're speaking with American accents even though they're in Australia? Your suspension of disbelief was broken at the fact that they're not living with other clownfish and not the fact that fish can talk? Oh, look. They're dreaming. Okay, sure, if you say so. But all of them have their eyes open. And they're basically zygotes right now, but whatever. And this is why I made a big deal about the realism. In the previous sin, you brought up an instance of the movie not being realistic. But here, you're sinning the fact that these fish haven't closed their eyes. You know fish sleep with their eyes open because they don't have eyelids, right? Do you want this movie to be realistic or not? Because I can't tell. We'll name uh, this half Marlon Jr. and then this half Coral Jr. I like Nemo. For all of them? First of all, they're clearly content with naming what I can only presume are about 100 fish Marlon Jr. So yeah, your question is irrelevant. But further, the film literally addressed your question and you cut them off. I like Nemo. Nemo? Well, we'll name one Nemo, but I'd like most of them to be Marlon Jr. Also, another interesting moment, considering that all clownfish are hermaphrodites, beginning life as males and then changing into females as the needs of the clan dictate. Which was an interesting, but irrelevant, bit of data that you're somehow construing as a sin of this film. What you're saying is the names are wrong because they are gendered, even though A, Marlon nor Coral are gendered names, B, Nemo is also gender neutral, and C, they're hermaphrodites, dummy. They literally can be named anything because clownfish can change their sex. There's over 400 eggs. Odds are one of them is bound to like you. Foreshad irony. I'm pretty sure I've sinned CinemaSins for foreshad irony before in another video. I can't remember which one it was, so I'll heart the first person to correctly name that video in the comments section. The Sparracuda wouldn't even know about the delicious clownfish babies if Coral hadn't darted down to protect them. Motherly instinct is addicted kids. Well, this is a stupid sin. You're sending a mother's instinct to protect her children, which, as mammals, we know is an incredibly natural and rational thing to do. But further, it's not reasonable to assume the Cuda wouldn't have found the eggs. I mean, he was looking right at these two when the nest with the eggs was right in front of them. The real sin is they hid their eggs in plain view. Coral. The movie kicks you in the balls at the four minute mark and your balls will not recover. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. The fact that this movie is able to garner an emotional response, not the ball kicking thing. Although being Jeremy, he probably does like that. Oh man, I'm only laughing because when I went to Wikipedia to research that earlier sin about breeding habits of the clownfish, I read that they're hermaphrodites. <laughs> so if the alpha female of the clan is killed, the strongest male remaining becomes female and takes her place, which means Nemo is destined to be a chick. And also means I think I just figured out the plot to Finding Dory. I guess we're back to sending things for being unrealistic. But you messed up there, pal. Marlin would be the one to become female, not Nemo. The mature male becomes female if the current female dies. What I'm saying is, Marlin should have been the first trans character in Disney. Do I have one, two, three? That's all I have? Oh, you're okay. Father thinks that stripe counting is equal to perfect health. Though I should give him a break since his wife and 399 children died and left him on his own. Marlon asks Nemo to count his stripes in the same manner people ask someone who suffered a head injury how many fingers they're holding up. Marlon is a helicopter parent who is obsessed with keeping Nemo from being harmed, and just before this, Nemo got stuck in a sponge, hence the question. How's the lucky fin? This is an asthma, but it might as well be. Child has some sort of affliction that makes survival harder cliche. That's ableist. We go out and back in. 
and then we go out and back in. Obsessive compulsive disorder. And now we're back to sending things for being realistic. Dude, pick a lane. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait to cross. Entire trip to school was devoid of other sea life, and then bam, this one spot has all the neighbors. Okay, was that it? They have neighbors a little ways away? What? Also, can't you go over it? They could have, but I'm sure they were afraid you'd send them for being too realistic. Hey, tell us a joke. Funny well, actually, you. that's a common misconception. Clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. It's also weird that we even refer to ourselves by the human given name of clownfish, but that's another story altogether. He's so close to getting it, guys. Let's name the zones of the open sea. I doubt it was this exact one, but I'm sending this motherfucker for being the same species or cousin species of that thing that killed Steve Irwin. Facts. Party learns the school kids are headed for the drop-off 10 f***ing seconds after they leave, but arrive so much later than them at the actual drop-off that it's basically inconceivable. While it's true Marlin learned where they were going 10 seconds after they left, he also spent another 11 seconds arguing with the other parents before taking off after them. Mr. Ray landed and spent about 10 seconds explaining bacteria, after which Nemo took off on his own. However, all of this is irrelevant because this is the open ocean. The Great Barrier Reef is 130,000 square miles, meaning Marlin is incredibly lucky to have even found Nemo, let alone be as fast as he was behind them. Unless, of course, you think fish swim in straight lines. Let's name the species, the species, the species. You can teach a song naming all the species to fish, but that doesn't mean they'll know which species is which. What the heck are you even saying here? It's a song for young fish that helps with their vocabulary. When they see a particular species, Mr. Ray points it out. This is basic school stuff, but I completely understand why you don't get it. All right, kids, feel free to explore, but stay close. I see lots of problems with these instructions. Would have been sweet if you named them. Fish only notice the scuba diver when we do, which is when he comes into frame. Why did no one see him the entire time Marlin, the teacher, and all the students were looking in this direction? Because he came from below the edge of the drop-off. Also, it's not like fish can see very far in deep water anyway, which is why they are so often eaten from below. Okay, so I've seen this movie before. I know the ultimate moral is that Marlin should let Nemo live his life and not be a nagging rules-based father. But the problem is, this scene that sets the entire movie in motion sort of proves that Marlin was right, and Nemo was a dumbass, right? So what is the sin here? You're agreeing with Marlin while also acknowledging the movie's moral lesson for parents. Your agreement with Marlin is not incongruous with the concept of a child's safety, especially a disabled one. The film is saying that Marlin should learn to let go, but it's also saying that sometimes your parents are right. There is no conflict between these two ideas. These goggles fall off the boat here, but rest assured, not only will they be found long after this by Marlin and Dory, but they'll also end up being some sort of a goggles ex machina kind of thing. Despite them having fallen off the boat, basically in shouting distance of where all this began. If the movie is setting up the goggles right now, it is by definition not a deus ex machina, my dude. You literally believe any solution to a problem is a deus ex machina, and that's where you failed. Jeez, do these fish ever know when there's something dangerous in their immediate vicinity? Bruce turns out to be a nice shark, but still. Bro, they're fish and they live in the ocean. There is something dangerous around them 24-7. Otherwise, the food chain would crumble because if there were no danger, they would proliferate out of control, decimating their food source, leading to their own eventual population decline. You know, like humans. Boy, I am a nice shark. Okay, sure, you're a nice shark, but you did everything in your power to make the fish you brought here uncomfortable. Why not tell Dory and Marlin that you're a nice shark and have no intention of eating them before going to your meeting? Besides the fact that he literally tried shaking their fins, he's a great white dude. No matter what, he was going to make them uncomfortable. Besides, this was done to subvert the expectations of the audience. You keep forgetting you are watching a movie and certain things are done for the people watching. Clownfish really go on tell us a joke. Man, sea creatures are really literal. Jeremy is a sea creature. And we gotta find a fish that can read this. Hey, look, shark! No, 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 no. After Marlin just sat in on a shark AA meeting and these sharks have done nothing to eat them, he still thinks they'll eat him, which causes him to panic and chase after Dory, which then starts a chain reaction to Bruce's relapse. Narration. Here's Brucey! This shark has seen The Shining, or The Tonight Show, but probably The Shining. Regardless, it's ridiculous. Jeremy is a sea creature. You can read? I can read? That's right, I can read! But why can you read? You're a goddamn fish. If fish can read in this universe, why is Marlin so mind blown about it? What's really going to bake your noodle is the fact that Marlin asks if she can read. As in Marlin knows the concept of reading. Jeremy, this is an animated family movie that follows fish that can speak English. It's not meant to be taken this seriously, and some suspension of disbelief is required. That was the contract you made when you decided to watch this specific movie. Next, you're going to tell me mermaids can't be black. Hello, little fella. Ah, dentist. That's British. Kid, if there's anything you need, just ask your Auntie Deb. That's me. <laughs> or if I'm not around, you can always talk to my sister, Flo. Auntie Deb calls her sister Flo, which, if she weren't a reflection, would mean she's Aunt Flo. 
So there's that to think about. So the sin here is that the movie made a clever menstruation pun? You sending this is like Ezra Miller criticizing Godzilla for terrorizing an island. The pelican broke a picture, which the dentist takes as an excuse to talk about his knees and directly addresses Nemo with the ultimate reason why he doesn't want to be in this aquarium right now. Plus, Nemo understands English, so that's an amazing series of fortunate events that happen just so he can plan his escape. You're narrating again, telling us all things we can see on the screen. But what makes this worse is you think this is the event that makes Nemo want to escape when that had been established before he saw this little Aussie gremlin. Are you my conscience? Movie saves a ton of animation time and money by putting Dory and Marlin in the darkest place possible. He means the ocean, you guys. The ocean. No eating here tonight. Woo! Eating, eating here, here tonight. tonight. Get the f*** out of there. Jeremy yells at the screen cliche. A little blue. She is sub-level, dude. Okay, so Dory is lying on top of this turtle's back, all unconscious and shit. But just a second ago, they went through some sort of roller coaster ride where Marlin had to hold on to crush his shell. So who kept Dory in place? Well, this was a load of bullshit. Dory was not unconscious. She's playing hide and seek with the baby turtles. In the scene we see her on the shell, she's counting, which means she was hanging 10 during the intense part of the current as well. It's incredible you missed that, considering it's literally the part of the scene you cut out. It's too Searching the ocean for days! Good thing there's a good old oceanic network where all sorts of different species report the news of a father looking for his son. Does this happen every time a fish gets lost? Is Marlin the only dad who ever looked for his son in the ocean blue? You're misunderstanding what's going on here. The film implies that Marlin's story is not only unique, but it's incredibly interesting. I mean, that's literally true, as Finding Nemo is one of Pixar's greatest films. But what you are seeing here is not reporting, it's gossip. Marlin's quest became a legend. I get that maybe the dentist is just so dumb he doesn't look over here. Fine, whatever. But how is the pelican speaking English to fish without making any noise a human can hear? Jeremy is a sea creature. Okay, so this whale has a uvula, and whales just don't have uvulas. Which is weird, because I was told the filmmakers really went into crazy detail on everything about all the creatures in this movie. You know, beyond the personification inaccuracies in order to tell the story. Clearly, this bit of the film was to show children and CinemaSins that the fish were in a whale's mouth. But fortunately for me, I'm making this video in 2022, which is the year it was discovered whales do in fact have an organ that is effectively a uvula. Ha! I feel like Louis Pasteur shitting on the Middle Ages. Also, I just wanted to point out that Jeremy is aware that the film takes liberties with the personification of these animals so that a story about said animals can flow. He just said that himself. The problem here is that he's still sinning it, even though he's aware of the intention of the filmmakers, and as I've always stated, if something is intended design, it's not a mistake. Remember, this is art, and you can't tell the artists how to create their art. This dentist places every bit of information these fish could possibly need close by in every situation. Dude, he's trying to clean his tank. You're suggesting the booklet with the instructions should be far away from the project, and all I have to say to that is your IKEA probably looks like your channel. Dennis gets the net taken from him, but he immediately has a plastic bag ready, which amazingly enough, actually freaking works. And he does this despite simply retrieving the net from the water. Have you ever tried to catch a fish in one of these things? It's impossible. Says this is impossible while showing evidence he caught Nemo off guard. We've seen Nigel run into this window every single time he's flown here, but now that he's Marlin and Dory's chauffeur, the window is wide open today. The fact that Nigel keeps flying into the window suggests that this window is usually open and we only saw the times it wasn't. And being that this is Australia, I don't think a window being open is all that strange. No one's ever stuck with me for so long before. How would you know? Cute joke, but she has short-term memory loss, not all memory loss, and even then she demonstrates that she does retain some things, like her ability to speak whale, for example. <laughs> Nemo just happens to pop out 20 yards away from his dad after going through a water treatment pipe. A pipe that led directly to the part of the ocean that his father was in because he just saw his son go down a drain. I'm looking for someone too. Hey, we can look together. Maybe we're even looking for the same exact person. Do you see why I sent him for yelling at the screen? Seriously, why was this a sin? <laughs> Why haven't these fish ever thought to do this? If Gil can figure this out in an aquarium, surely millions upon millions of fish could have figured this out over the years and spread that knowledge. Dude, these are wild fish. It's every fish for themselves and they are panicking after getting caught. Have you never seen how fish act in a net before? With fronds like these, who needs anemones? No! <laughs> so learning how to let his son take risks somehow also made Marlin good at joke telling? And these assholes still think this is funny enough even though they heard the gist of the joke five times while he was butchering it earlier? Jeremy sends his audience. But he didn't, so why is this a sin? Are you saying you wouldn't have sinned this if that happened? That's like the big bad wolf telling the piglet that built his house out of brick he wouldn't eat him if he came outside. Nigga, we don't believe you.